Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel all about electronics. So in this video, we will see the couple of questions based on the shift register. So in this question, we have been given this 4 bit shift register and here we have been asked to find the content of the register after the 3 clock pulses. So if you see over here, then we have been given the serial in parallel out type of shift register. So as you can see over here, these two outputs are XOR using the XOR gate and the output of the XOR gate is given to the serial input. So let us find the content of this register after the 3 clock pulses. So here we have been given that the initial content of the register is equal to 0, 1, 1, 0. And let's say the 4 cells of the registers is equal to Q3, Q2, Q1 and Q0. That means here this serial input is equal to the Q1 XOR Q0. That means initially with this content, the output of the XOR gate is equal to 1 XOR 0 and that is equal to 1. So the same 1 will be applied to the serial input. That means at the first clock pulse, if you see this Q3 output, then that is equal to 1 and the remaining 3 bits will be right shifted. So this 0 will come over here while similarly this 1 will come over here and similarly the content of the Q1 will be shifted to Q0. That means after the first clock pulse, the input to the XOR gate is equal to 1 and 1. That means the serial input will become 0. And the same 0 will be appear at the Q3. That means at the next clock pulse, this Q3 will become 0. And the remaining 3 bits will be right shifted. That means this one will come over here, while the content of the Q2 will come to the Q1 and likewise the content of the Q1 will be shifted to the Q0. So now after the second clock pulse, the output of the XOR gate will be equal to 0 XOR 1 and that is equal to 1. So now this 1 will be the serial input to the shift register. That means at the next clock edge, the content of the Q3 will become 1 and the remaining 3 bits will get right shifted. So this 0 will come over here. And likewise, this 1 and 0 will be shifted in the next place. That means after the 3 clock pulses, if you see the content of the register, then that is equal to 1, 0, 1, 0. So from this we can say that for the given question, this C is the correct answer. So now let us move to the next question. So this question is similar to the previous question, but there is a little modification in the question. So as you can see, once again, this is the serial in parallel out type of shift register. And as you can see, the couple of outputs are XOR using the XOR gates and the output of the XOR gate is once again given to the serial input. So here initially, this register is loaded with the 1010 and here we have been asked to find that after how many clock pulses, the content of the register will once again become 1010. That means here, the initial content of the register is equal to 1 0 1 0. Let's say these four cells are Q3, Q2, Q1 and Q0. And let's also assume that the output of the first XOR gate is equal to Y. That means this Y is equal to Q1 XOR Q0. While the output of the second XOR gate is given to the serial input. That means this serial input is equal to Y XOR Q2. So effectively we can say that this serial input is equal to Q2 XOR Q1 XOR Q0 because this Y is equal to Q1 XOR Q0. So since the serial input is the XOR operation of the three outputs, so this serial input will become 1 whenever the number of 1s in the three output is equal to odd. So initially if you see, then the content of the register is equal to 1 0 1 0. That means at that time, this Q1 XOR Q0 is equal to 1 and similarly, this Q2 XOR Y or this 0 XOR 1 is equal to 1. That means initially if you see, then in this Q2, Q1, Q0, the number of 1s is equal to odd. And therefore, this serial input is equal to 1. That means at the next clock age, this will be the input to this shift register. And therefore, the content of the Q3 will be same as the serial input. While the remaining 3 bits will get right shifted. That means this Q2 will become 1 while the Q1 will become 0 and likewise this Q0 will become 1. 
So in this way, the three bits have been right shifted. So after the first clock pulse, if you see, then this Q2, Q1, Q0 is equal to 101. And since the number of ones in these three bits is equal to odd, so the serial input will become zero. That means now at the next clock age, the serial input is equal to zero. So the same zero will also appear at the Q3 and the remaining three bits will get right shifted. So now after the second clock age, this Q2, Q1, Q0 is equal to 110. And once again, as you can see, since the number of ones in these three bits is equal to E1, so once again, the serial input will become zero. So at the next clock age, the same zero will get shifted to the Q3 and the remaining three bits will get right shifted. That means this Q2 will become zero while the Q1 will become one. And likewise, this Q0 will also become one. That means after the third clock age, the content of the register is equal to 0011. So now in this Q2, Q1, Q0, once again, since the number of ones is equal to E1, so the output of the second XOR gate will still remain zero. Or in other words, the serial input is still equal to zero. So at the next clock age, the same will appear at the Q3. And once again, the remaining three bits will get right shifted. So now, after the fourth clock age, the content of the register is equal to 0001. And if you see these last three bits, then in these three bits, the number of ones is equal to odd. That means now, the output of the second XOR gate will become one. And the same one will appear at the serial input. So now, at the fifth clock age, the content of this Q3 will become one. And the remaining three bits will get right shifted. So after the fifth clock age, the content of the register is equal to 1000. So if you see this Q2, Q1 and Q0, then all the three bits are zero. And since the number of ones in these three bits is equal to E1, so we can say that the output of the second XOR gate will remain zero. Therefore, the serial input is also equal to zero. And at the next clock age, the same will also appear at the Q3. While once again, the remaining three bits will get right shifted. So now, after the six clock pulse, the content of the register is equal to 0100. So now, if you see this Q2, Q1 and Q0, then they are 100. And in these three bits, since the number of ones is equal to odd, so now the output of the second XOR gate will become one. That means now the serial input will become one. So now at the next clock age, the same one will also appear at the Q3. And if you see the remaining three bits, then they will get right shifted. That means after the seventh clock pulse, if you see the content of the register, then that is equal to 1010. So as you can see, after the seven clock pulses, the content of the register is getting repeated. So from this, we can say that for the given question, this B is the correct answer. All right. So now let us move to the next example. So here, as you can see, we have been given the shift register and the initial content of the register is equal to 01010. So as you can see, the output of the Q2 and Q0 is logically odd and it is connected to the register. So here, we have been asked to find the average power which is getting dissipated across this register R. So here, we have been also given that all the logic gates which is used in the circuit is equal to ideal. That means there is a no propagation delay in the logic gates. Moreover, we have been also given that the supply voltage of this circuit is equal to 5 volt. That means here, we can assume that this logic 1 is equal to 5 volt while the logic 0 is equal to 0 volt. That means suppose if the output of the XOR gate is equal to logic 1, it means that it provides the 5 volt across this 10 kilo ohm resistor. And whenever it is equal to logic 0, then the voltage across the resistor is equal to 0 volt. So considering this, now let us find the average power which is getting dissipated across this resistor R. So here as you can see, we have been given this serial in parallel out type of shift register. And here, this Q2 and Q0 outputs are logically odd. So let's say the output of this OR gate is equal to Y. That means here, this Y is equal to this Q2 plus Q0. That means whenever this any of the one output is equal to high, then this Y output will become one. And here, we have been also given the initial content of the all flip-flops. 
So initially, the candidate of all the flip flops is equal to 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. So here, to find the average power which is getting dissipated across the resistor R, first of all, we need to find the pattern of the output Y and we need to see after what clock cycles the same pattern gets repeated. So based on that, we will find the average power which is getting dissipated across the resistor R. So initially, with this content, this y is equal to q0 plus q2. So in this case, it will be equal to 0. And if you see over here, then this q0 output is fed back to the d4. That means the q0 will be the new input for this d4. That means here, at the next clock edge, this q0 output will get shifted into the q4. And if you see the remaining 4 bits, then they will get right shifted. That means the content of the q4 will get shifted to the Q3, while similarly, the content of the Q3 will get shifted to Q0. And likewise, the remaining bits will get right shifted. So after the first clock edge, if you see this output Y, then that is equal to Q0 plus Q2. And in this case, it will become 1. So now, at the next clock edge, the same 1 will appear at the Q4. That means after the second clock edge, this Q4 will become 1 and the remaining 4 bits will get right shifted. So now if you see, then this Q0 plus Q2 is equal to 0, because both the Q0 and Q2 is equal to 0. That means after the second clock edge, this Y is equal to 0. So now, at the third clock edge, the content of the Q0 will get shifted to Q4. That means now, this Q4 will become 0, while the remaining 4 bits will get right shifted. So this will be the content of the register after the third clock cycle. And after the third clock cycle, this y will become 1. Because this q0 is equal to 1, while the q2 is equal to 0. So now at the fourth clock cycle, once again, this q0 will get shifted to q4. And if you see the remaining 4 bits, then they will get right shifted. So this will be the content of the register after the four clock cycles. And if you see the y, then it will also become 1. Because here, this q2 is equal to 1. So now, at the fifth clock cycle, once again, this q0 will get shifted to q4. And the remaining 4 bits will get right shifted. So this will be the content of the register after the fifth clock cycle. And since the q2 and q0 both are 0, so this output y will remain 0. So now, at the sixth clock cycle, once again, this q4 is same as the q0. That means this Q4 will become 0. And once again, the remaining 4 bits will get right shifted. So after the 6 clock pulse, if you see the output Y, then that is equal to 1. Because here, both Q2 and Q0 are 1. And similarly, at the 7 clock pulse, the content of the Q0 will get shifted to Q4. And as we have seen, the remaining 4 bits will get right shifted. That means after the 7 clock pulse, this y will become 0. So if you see the output pattern of the y, then that is getting repeated after these 5 clock cycles. And if you see the same thing in the timing diagram, then it will look like this. So here, for the first clock cycle, this y is equal to 1, while during the second clock cycle, that is equal to 0. Then for the next two clock cycles, it will become 1, and once again, at the 5th clock cycle, it will become 0. So after the 5 clock cycles, once again, the same pattern will get repeated. So this is the time period of the Y output. So since it is repeated after the 5 clock cycles, so we can say that this T' dash is equal to phi t, where the t is the time period of the clock cycle. So with the help of it, now let us find the average power which is getting dissipated across the resistor R. So if you see over here, then over the 1 clock cycle, during the 3 clock cycles, the output remains high, while during the 2 clock cycles, the output remains low. So we can say that, over the 3 fifth of the total time period, the output of the OR gate remains high. So here, whenever the output of the OR gate is equal to high, then in terms of the voltage, it represents the 5 volt. And whenever it is low, then it represents the zero volt. So if this OR gate remains continuously high for the entire time period, then in that case, the average power 
which is getting dissipated across the resistor R is equal to V square divided by R. And in this case, it will be equal to 25 divided by 10 kilo ohm. That is equal to 2.5 millivolt. But in this case, since the output remains high only for the three-fifth of the total duration, so we can say that that power will get multiplied with this factor. That means the average power will become 3 by 5 times 2.5 milliwatt and that is equal to 1.5 milliwatt. But still if you are not convinced then we can also find the same power using the conventional method. So conventionally this P average can be given as 1 by T times integration 0 to T V square divided by R times dt. So in this case this t is equal to t dash or we can say that that is equal to phi t. So if you see over here then from 0 to t this output remains high and once again from 2t to 4t this output once again remains high. So we can say that this p average is equal to 1 divided by phi t times 0 to t this v squared divided by r times dt plus 2t to 4t times v square divided by r times dt. So if we take this r outside then we can write it as 1 divided by phi times t times r and in the bracket we will have this 25 times t plus 25 times this 4t minus 2t. So that is equal to this 1 divided by phi times t times r and in the bracket this 25 times t plus 25 times 2t or we can say that that is equal to this 25 times this 3t divided by this phi t times r that means that is equal to 3 by phi times this 25 divided by 10 kilo ohm and that is equal to 1 point 5 milliwatt. So in this way we can also find the average power in a conventional way. So from this we can say that for the given question the average power which is getting dissipated across the resistor R is equal to 1.5 milliwatt.